Starting off from Libya, where NATO warplanes have attacked Tripoli's international airport, destroying its radar antenna. Airport officials say two people have been injured in the attack. They say the radar was used for civilian purposes, such as guiding flights by the UN and relief agency organizations. However, NATO says the system was being used by regime forces to attack its aircraft. Civilian radars cannot track and target aircraft like military radars, and it's against international law to attack them. Meanwhile, fighting between revolutionary forces and government troops is continuing. The opposition says it's won the days-long battle for the oil town of Brega. They say that the bulk of regime forces have pulled back to the nearby town of Ras Lanouf. However, the Libyan government says its troops are still in full control of the city. Let's discuss the war in Libya now with Mr. Abu Yumi Azikiwi, editor of Pan-African Newswire, joining us live from Detroit. Thanks very much, sir, for being with us. NATO, we've just heard, uh, has, been, has rather destroyed the, the radar antenna of the international airport in Tripoli. Now, it's already been accused of overriding the UN resolution, and now the attack on the airport is being called a violation of international law. Is NATO going too far? Well, of course, uh, this is part of a overall pattern of the escalation of the bombing uh, in Libya. Uh, just yesterday on uh, July 17th, anywhere between 60 and 75 ordinances were dropped on the capital of Tripoli and also in the uh, eastern suburbs of Tajura. And uh, it's really an escalation of the ongoing conflict uh, that has been carried out for the last four months in that oil-producing North African state. The UN Resolution 1970 and United Nations Resolution 1973 have both uh, been violated, even according to what the uh, Security Council had intended initially in regard to passing uh, these uh, resolutions uh, several months ago. What has happened is that the French have violated the uh, UN Resolution 1970 by doing airdrops of weapons uh, to the uh, TNC rebel forces inside the country. And of course, 1973 merely called uh, for the protection of civilians. Yet we have the bombing of civilian installations, uh, government uh, communication satellites, schools have been hit, ports have been hit, and other commercial facilities inside the country, as well as civilians. Many of them in the hundreds have been killed uh, in this bombing uh, inside of Libya. And this represents only a continuation of that same policy that's being carried out by the wow. United States and NATO. Yeah, um, let's go to the role of the United States now. We know that, that uh, the attacks rather started with the U.S. before it handed over command of the operations to NATO. Now, a U.S. State Department official has confirmed talks between U.S. officials and Gaddafi representatives. The Gaddafi side is saying this is the first step in repairing ties. Washington says it was asking Gaddafi to step down. Why do you think this meeting was held in the first place? I believe that the uh, U.S. Uh, State Department and the White House are looking for a way out of this conflict. As I acknowledged before, the bombing has been going on now for four months. The government in Tripoli is not budging. In fact, over the last uh, two weeks, uh, we've seen demonstrations in the hundreds of thousands in Tripoli and other cities in the western part of Libya in support of the government. Uh, just yesterday, uh, Colonel Gaddafi spoke uh, via audio tape uh, to people inside Libya saying that uh, the government would not surrender, that they would not compromise with NATO. At the same time, the NATO forces are showing divisions within its own ranks. The uh, Dutch government uh, said that they're going to uh, halt their uh, air attacks over the country. Norway has already said that August the 1st is going to be its deadline. So with the NATO uh, alliance breaking up in regard to this war, the U.S. and the other uh, Western European countries are looking for a way out. This is really the reason why uh, they gave the uh, recognition to the Transitional National Council just this last past Thursday at their meeting in Istanbul, uh, Turkey. But it really doesn't make any difference in regard to the actual conditions that are taking place on the ground in Libya. It doesn't matter if they recognize the TNC or not because it has very little impact on the concrete conditions that are taking place right now involving the war inside Libya. Besides, Keith, if I could just uh, refer to that question, to the issue you just raised now, and that's the recognition of that council. Briefly, if you can, before we leave you, I'd like to raise that issue as well. A lot of questions have been asked about what's going to happen to the frozen Libyan assets once that uh, council has been recognized. People are saying that those. Uh, 
large numbers of rather those monies and funds could be falling into the wrong hands because we're not very sure, are we, who members of these uh, the Benghazi Council are and what the situation is exactly looking like? Well, I don't believe for one minute uh, that those uh, tens of billions of dollars are going to be handed over to the TNC forces. Uh, they've already pledged hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to the opposition forces, and there's never been any mention in regard to the accountability of what's happened to those funds. So I believe very strongly that this is just a cover to loot uh, the national treasury of Libya and to loot their foreign assets. We're talking about over $120 billion in foreign assets, some $30 billion here in the United States that have been frozen. So I don't think those monies are going to be turned over to the TNC. Uh, they, they're claiming that they have no money to continue their campaign against the Libyan government. It's just a cover uh, to confiscate more resources uh, from the government and the uh, business people inside of Libya itself. Thank you very much, Mr. Abu Yomi Azikiwi, editor of Pan-African Newswire, joining us there with his comments from Detroit.